Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I am the founder and host, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp. And with me today is Sarah Carolyn. And here's a bit about Sarah. She is the host of the podcast, Anxious AF, where she and her guests discuss their experiences with anxiety. She is also the writer and director of the YouTube series, Film Life Rules, which helps film production newcomers learn the basic of what they'll need on set. In a former life, she worked in production on countless independent films and reality singing competitions. She is currently editing a new podcast, Fundamentals of Action Film 101, that she hosted with her friend, Christopher Carter. Christopher passed away in October of 2021, so she will be releasing the episode they recorded to honor his memory later this year. So without further ado, please welcome Sarah Curlin to GEMS Podcast, where we will be discussing anxiety. What is it? What what can you gain from the topic? And what to look out for? Hi, Genesis. Thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. My pleasure, Sarah. So before we jump into your segment, I definitely want to um, have you share a fun and interesting fact about yourself as a way of an icebreaker. Um, let me see. Uh, I think that I my probably my most interesting fact is that I am really into British television right now. I don't know why, but I've been really getting into like their game shows and panel shows and I'm going to London in a month. So I'm probably just kind of preparing myself for British culture. Oh, nice. Are you going to London for business or pleasure? Pleasure. I've never been uh, outside of the continent. So I'm excited to, I want to just explore new things and just decided let's just go, you know. Super cool. So safe travels, learn a lot and eat a lot of food and just really submerge yourself in the culture there. Have you been? I have not, but I have family that lives there. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Sarah, I know anxiety is a topic that really hits home for you. So I really want you to start to unpack anxiety first. I always like to start off with, uh, definitions of what anxiety is just so people will not be swayed by what they see and hear on the media because sometimes the media could give you a bunch of garbage or they could give you really credible information so talk about what is anxiety and why is it important to you um well i I first want to start off by saying that i'm not a professional in terms of i'm not a doctor um i didn't study anxiety but i i am diagnosed with anxiety disorder so um, officially now, uh, I started a podcast about anxiety before I got officially diagnosed, but I always thought that it was a part of my life. And it's like, I feel like I've always obsessing over things or I get stressed very easily. Um, high stakes situations, really like yelling or a lot of my plate, like it really just kind of compounds itself together. It kind of means different things to me to different people. And what I do on my podcast is talking about anxiety in, in their aspects of their life and how it, how it manifests itself in a physical way and an emotional way, because it can, it can take on both of those forms. Thank you for sharing that. And do you feel like when you were diagnosed with anxiety, it came with negative stigmas because people are so caught up with like, oh, you're crazy or you're this or you're that when in actuality they just really don't understand what anxiety is and that it can um, be attached to anyone any one of socioeconomic status any race or etc and it does not discriminate well I think I was diagnosed officially you know probably like five years ago if that so I think anxiety, depression, things along those lines. Mental health, I think, is more talked about now than it's been ever. Um, when I was a youth, I don't think it was something that was talked about. I couldn't tell you what anxiety was. I didn't know the word. I didn't know what it meant. I just thought depression meant something bad. And usually people talked about depression. They talked about anxiety, and those two things go hand in hand to other people. It doesn't always. You can be anxious and not depressed or vice versa, um, or you can be both. But I think now where it's a, it has, I think it depends on what culture you're in um, and what, you know, what background you're, like you said, socioeconomic status, race, uh, things like that. Um, I think 
there's different ways that anxiety and depression and things like that are interpret interpreted. <laughs> I can't speak today, um, but they're just interpreted in different ways. Uh, I think my parents just don't, they're not really mental health people. They were just like, don't go to therapy, everything. What, what's, what's said at home stays at home sort of thing. So, you know, it took me, you know, going to college and, and getting out on my own to sort of realize uh, what that meant. And I think there was a stigma then, but I think now therapy is so important. There's so many apps that people can, can use to get therapy or to seek help. Um, it just, I think it's more accepted and more talked about now, but it's depending on where you're, where you're at. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you did not allow your upbringing and what your parents enforced on you to stop you from, you know, going out and learning more as well as seeking professional help. So you mentioned that you were diagnosed five years ago, Sarah. So what led you to going to the physician's office to just really understand what was going on with yourself? Um, so it's been sort of a long journey, but I didn't start therapy till probably 10 years ago. Um, I had a therapist, um, for nine years, my first therapist, no one to therapy before. Um, and over the course of time, I realized that she wasn't the right therapist for me. Um, I, I have binge eating disorder. I've had binge eating issues my whole life, eating issues, weight issues, self-worth, self-esteem, all that stuff. And I went there to sort of have someone kind of go through with me binge eating and try to have healthier habits, but also get into the mindset of you know, what needs to kind of change in my head to kind of get me to a better place where I can accept myself for who I am and not be so looks focused. And her advice to me a lot of the time, she said to me once that I can just binge carrots if I want to binge something. And that's not necessarily how binge eating works. Um, you know, I was going towards sweets a lot and, and eating cookies and things like that. Carrots weren't going to do it for me. They're not going to bring the emotion out. It might work for some people, but it just sort of felt flippant and it didn't, I kind of, once she said that, I was like, huh. And then I started to think about other things she said, and she's very look focused. And she told me she got gastric bypass eventually because she didn't want her, her kids and her husband to disapprove of her. And that struck wow. me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she pushed, she thought I should get gastric bypass. Um, if I was having so much weight issues and I was like, I, that seems like a lot. It seems like a life-changing experience. And I didn't know she had it until she told, until I asked her why she pushed it so much and why she had it eventually when she told me. And so long-winded as that was, um, I eventually left that because I realized we didn't have the same solution in mind. We didn't have the same, she was pushing an agenda that she wanted me to to go towards. So I left Then COVID happened, literally happened right when, when COVID happened. And I realized I still needed to talk to somebody. And obviously COVID has been hard on everybody. And especially for someone with eating issues, I was eating everything in the house. I was by myself, never left the house. Uh, so I have this new therapist and, and she, um, you know, I, my old therapist said I had anxiety and, and that was in that five-year period, but you know, I actually got to use it as like a, because binge eating disorder, I guess, isn't covered under insurance. So you have to pick a, a thing to go to therapy for that's covered. And I guess anxiety is covered. So that's how I like officially found out, you know, during COVID that that's what I have. That's what that's that that's the focus and not binge eating necessarily. Wow. And I'm glad that you were able to recognize early on that the therapist that you had was not necessarily working for you because as you were talking and I was listening to some of the things that she was telling you, Sarah, it sounded like she was trying to deflect onto you what she was going through by her having a gastric bypass, by her having, you know, outward appearance um, issues. And maybe she was even struggling with some imposter syndrome and she probably saw some of those things in, in you, but versus being a paid and trained professional that is helping you get to your root cause of what's going on in you, she's just giving you different symptoms based on what has worked for her, and that's not going to be the case. And then for her to say, why don't you just binge eating carrots 
well, first of all, lady, do you even know if I like carrots? Do you know if I'm <laughs> allergic to carrots or whatever the case may be? And it just kind of sounds like she was just trying to shut you off. So kudos to you for realizing that the partnership wasn't working and it was time to change. So was she the same person that diagnosed you with anxiety disorder? She, she mentioned anxiety, but it wasn't like, she told me I had it, but I was never like, it didn't help me necessarily with insurance or anything like that. I guess the official, official thing was when I got a new therapist, but, uh, she was just like, I think you're an anxious person. And she was just the first person to put it in my head. But I think anxiety is sort of the umbrella thing for the rest. So it would have been nice to know, to work towards talking about anxiety rather than just talking about how are we going to lose weight? How are you going to look better? A lot of her comments were about, if she thought I lost weight, she'd be like, oh, you look amazing. Like everything was very focused on looks. And she was like, I love this shirt on you. Like this really flatters you, makes you look thinner like using that vocabulary and just making me think that um, that I wasn't worth much if I wasn't thin. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And whenever you think about people who are out here struggling with anxiety disorder, what are some of the um, encouragement tips and resources that has helped you along with your journey? And what can you share with our audience and audience regarding it? Um, I've been listening to, I think stories for me are always what brings me out of anxiety. Me being able to talk to other people and just sharing my own experiences with anxiety, which, you know, especially with, with doing anxious AF, the podcast and people reaching out to me and telling me their own stories of anxiety. And then it's sort of, or if I post on Facebook, like, Hey, you anxious? Like, what do you want to talk about? And then people just comment on my Facebook with, with ideas and just, having relating to people that you may have never spoken to that way is something that's really, really helped me. And I've, I started doing storytelling and that's how I got into podcasting. And I used to do storytelling, open mics and stuff like that. So, and those made me more anxious, but just hearing other people's stories and hearing people tell them um, in their way has, has definitely helped me. And just listening to uh, also not surrounding myself with things that I know are going to trigger me. Like I, I don't really watch shows with violence or yelling because I know that will trigger me. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go and find something wholesome and find something where I don't have to, I don't have to pay too much attention. Or I also can just find joy in it. And I know there is violence and stress and other things in the world, but sometimes you just want to escape those things and not feel it and not feel pain from something else. I feel like I'm an empath. I don't know about you, but I feel like I take on other people's emotions very easily. So I, I try to not do something that's either going to get me like super emotional or like super upset. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So it's like you're paying attention to your mental capacity and what, what are you allowing to come into your life? And is it a positive vibration or is it a negative vibration? Is it going to add value or is it going to take you on a downward spiral? And you're really protecting your peace is what you're doing there because we have so many things with social media, the news and just external factors and voices that can easily get us distracted and take us off course, Sarah. And um, your podcast is amazing. I remember when you and I did a collaboration and you let me come on your show and I actually um, reached out because I saw your Facebook post and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I think you and I had a great segment. (laughs) Yeah. And I, you know, I loved your book that you put out and I really wanted to touch on, especially coming from, you know, being a black person, you know, chocolate drop as you, as you used in your book um, in uh, this white, rich fortune 500 environment. And there's so much anxiety that I'm assuming came with that. And so it was really interesting to read your book and, and talk to you and hear your perspective. And that really gave me like a better understanding from a world that I have no clue about. Yeah, and thank you so much for your support and just um, getting a copy of the book and et cetera, because it, it definitely helps when we support one another. And for anyone out there who is battling with, I know, a binge eating, you talked about binge eating. And do you think that binge eating was a result of the anxiety because, oh, I'm going through these thoughts and emotions, so let me just eat. And some people, whenever they binge eat, it's also a form of emotional eating and a way Mm -hmm. to de-stress. So can you talk about that a bit? Sure. 
Um, so I've been binge eating my whole life. And yeah, I think anxiety is, is at the root of that. Um, my parents were fighting all the time growing up. I'm an only child and I didn't know how to escape that. Um, so a lot of times I would just like, I would see my dad like sneak cookies out of the cupboard. And so, and he would just sit in his room and like eat cookies in front of the TV. And so I started to do that behavior myself with that and with ice cream. And, you know, I would, my mom would want me to eat in my room. So I would hide the empty bowls in the, in the cabinets in my room and like the shelves. And, uh, so I I became good at hiding and I became good at keeping secrets and the anxiety of hiding that would, would heighten the, the binge eating because then I'd be so nervous that I would eat more. And it kind of, it would be my escape in, in, in a lot of elements of my life. And it would just continue. And it's the only really, as my current therapist says, she was glad that I had that because it was a coping mechanism that helped me, even if it's not necessarily a healthy thing to do. Um, and, you know, I think what ended up, especially in COVID, I was resorting to it a lot and I just felt sluggish and, I've always battled with weight, but I would see it from a physical standpoint of not looking like the typical, you know, model or what have you, or magazine cover, whatever it is. And, you know, I would, I would punish myself. Uh, there's like the, the, the gym, going to the gym and working out, but then being, then being like, you know, bored later on and then eating and then punishing yourself for eating and going back to the gym and then so on and so forth, and just a cycle. So um, in COVID, I joined uh, Emotional Eating Support Group. Um, if anyone is interested, uh, there's a group called Balance. Um, they are based out of New York, but I'm sure they have some sort of Zoom thing that you could join. But um, I went to them and I did Zoom support group with a bunch of people. And uh, we kind of talked about, we were sort of, sort of like opening up to other people and then tips on, thinking of eating differently and pausing and thinking before you eat. Cause a lot of times I was just, it was like blackouts. I would just not, I would just eat and not pay attention to shovel things in. So it was helpful to have that and to have like a perspective on it. And I think it's still something I go to every once in a while, but I look at myself now after all this time and I see, I see a pretty good looking person. I don't see I used to call myself a blob and a whale and all these like really hurtful terms. And I just think over time, if you don't like what I look like, you can kiss my butt. Yeah. I don't know if you can this, but <laughs> um, I sense of myself. And I really like the fact that you were able to find a group, number one, that tailored to what you were going going through with the emotional eating and the binge eating because whenever you could connect with other people who are going through things that are similar then you could share ideas of what's working what's not working and you feel like it's a safe place for you to confide and I like the fact that you change how you were seeing yourself and how you were speaking to yourself because if you keep saying those negative things I'm a whale I'm a blob and da 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 you're going to start to believe what you're saying so one um, thing that I like to do with some of my coaching clients is I like to challenge them to get in the mirror and start reciting positive things about themselves outwardly and allowing them to see themselves um, as they say those things and see the energy that it takes off because when you're saying positive things, you have a smile on your face, you're releasing endorphins in your body, you just feel good, like you don't feel tense, you don't feel like your fist is clenching up or anything like that. And before you know it, you're scrubbing away that old programming and you're entering new programming. So you're recalibrating your software system and your software system is how you are wired. So your mindset, then when your mind is conditioned, then you're able to feel it. And as you are feeling it, you're able to walk it out with confidence and knowing that you are secure with who you are and not what the world wants you to be. And it's not always easy because there are challenges, especially like I'll use myself, for example, I was a victim of bullying. So when I was a victim of bullying, I sunk into a dark place where I went through depression in high school and there was nine consecutive days 
where I did not go to school. I was losing weight because I was not eating. I didn't have an appetite. And I was the smallest I ever was, Sarah. There was this store called Buyaka and I was a triple zero. So that's like super, super tiny. And people are like, oh, are you anorexic or are you bulimia? And people just make assumptions. And we all heard the saying, when you make assumptions, it makes a, a double snake out of you and I, because you're allowing ignorance to take over. Right, right. I think, and that's also, you know, as someone else that was an object of bullying, I completely understand that. I think I, I did the opposite where I just ate my feelings out. And I, you know, I, when I talk about being bullied in that time, especially in high school, um, there are a lot of times where I would uh, be by myself at home after school and I would order um, uh, a pizza and order cheese breadsticks and just eat it by myself in my house and just cry and eat all the cheese and carbs I wanted. And that freed me or it gave me an escape in some way. And I kind of like blacked out, but it was still like, it doesn't get rid of the harm of, of things that people say to you. And, and body especially is the biggest, I feel like the biggest thing with bullies. It's like, that's the first thing people go to because they know that's the first thing that's going to be in your head is like about your body. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel like bullying like to capitalize on your weakness because they know what your weakness is based on either a comment you've made about yourself or they could see a lack of confidence in you or et cetera. But I mean, like we have to take that power back. And when you were talking about like binge eating, um, that could apply to a normal person. Like, for example, if you find yourself eating cookies and you just start eating a pack of Oreos and before you know it, one row is gone, then you're halfway down the next row. That could be a form of binge eating. You may not necessarily be diagnosed with binge eating, but there is a reason why you're eating it. It is soothing you and the taste or the crunch or the sweetness is satiating you and it's just addictive. So that's also another thing that I think our listeners and viewers should be mindful of because I have been guilty of that where I'm like oh these cookies are good and before you know it like a whole pack of Girl Scout cookies are gone or a whole pack of Oreos and you're like dang did I really eat that well who else there's no cookie monster in sight <laughs> yeah especially when I started living alone and I'd be like oh who ate all of this and I'm like oh wait it's me <laughs> like god damn it uh I think yeah you're right I think it's that chewing sensation. It's like that. It doesn't, if it's already, after you've chewed it, you don't feel anything any, like it's not going to affect you anymore. It's really just that, just that chewing stage and that high of that, that release is what will keep you, you going. It is, you know, I had a conversation with my coworker um, when I started opening up more about binge eating and I ended up going to Overeaters Anonymous or OA um, when I was getting really, where I thought I was just at a low point, rock bottom. And I, my coworker uh, was an alcoholic and he, we were talking about, I realized that the principles of OA were ma matching AA. And, you know, we started talking about just addiction overall because it, food addiction is an addiction. And in some ways it's, it's, it might be more difficult because uh, you can't stop eating food or you get another disorder, you know what I mean? Like alcohol, you can stop drinking and, you know, but with food, it's like, you can't stop eating or you're going to have more issues. So, you know, obviously both are huge problems, but it was just interesting to see that addiction is addiction and you could still, you still can feel it just like somebody else that, you know, has alcohol issues, drug issues, et cetera. And I like how you did the comparison there because no issue is better than another. It's just a different way of tackling those issues, whether you're going to this support group over another one. But as we begin to wind down, Sarah, I want you to share some, some um, tips that have helped you by going to you know, the Overeating Anonymous group and the other group that you mentioned early on in the segment. And um, just share those tools because it can definitely help somebody who's dealing with anxiety or a binge eating disorder, because we are here to educate, inspire, motivate, and let them know that we're not perfect. And I'd rather have progression over perfection. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, I think, yeah. So uh, Overeaters Anonymous is a group similarly run to AA, obviously anonymous in the title. 
Um, and you can, it's basically where you go and you can share your stories and you can also have like a buddy, like an accountability buddy, similar to AA. Um, you can Google that and find a meeting near you. Um, it might be rare to find like a binge eating support group, but I would say do, do the research in your area. I went to Balance in New York. I don't know if they do still do Zoom stuff now. Um, if they don't, I would still consider, I think the Binge Eating Association, if you look them up as well, um, I believe that's what they're called. Um, and you can just start researching that. There's a lot of different levels between binge eating, emotional eating, and, and just going down the rabbit hole of um, health at every size and learn that you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be one weight, uh, one size to be healthy. And, you know, it, learning that whole process really did help me out that you can, and I follow a lot of uh, plus size people on Instagram that are swimsuit models or like plus size influencers and just seeing people, just seeing people that are, you know, similar weight to me wearing crop tops was really something that inspired me to just to wear whatever I want and not give a poop. <laughs> I'm really bad yes. at not swimming. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We're we're all humid. Um, I'm definitely working on uh, my potty map. So, Sarah, I want you to leave the listeners and viewers with your call to action for this segment, and then plug your website and your social media handles. Yeah, um, I would just say to if you are having issues, start to with the eating or he's, I really recommend going to therapy. Um, therapy is getting more and more accessible these days. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, or, you know, just even just start, start the Google process of trying to look into what you're feeling. And, um, I also learned about the concept of warm lines recently where they're not like uh, crisis hotlines, but there are hotlines where you can talk to people just if you need someone to talk to. So I would also look up warm lines in your area. Um, so I'm Sarah Curlin. Hi. Uh, my podcast is called Anxious AF. Uh, you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I tell stories about my anxiety and I talk to other people, including yourself, um, about anxiety and what the other people are going through. I'm currently working on new episodes, so hopefully that'll be out. Uh, there's four seasons up. You can listen to it wherever you get them or on the website for the show, anxiousafshow.com. Um, I'm also working on a new podcast, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, will be released later this year called Fundamentals of Action Film 101. Uh, and uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Sarah Curlin and uh, my YouTube series for uh, film film set newbies, PAs, stuff like that uh, is uh, youtube.com slash film life rules that I directed and wrote. Amazing. And thank you so Woo. much, Sarah, for just coming on and just sharing your journey with anxiety as well as um, binge eating disorder, because definitely, you know, sharing about your personal life and just being vulnerable, sometimes it can be hard, but it is def definitely necessary to just unpack those just so we could help other people because you never know what someone else is going through. They may have a smile on their face, but they're crying out and screaming on the inside. So until we chat next time, listeners and viewers, make sure you subscribe and share this segment. We are on 40 plus platforms and follow us on YouTube at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And we are actually looking for brand sponsors and ambassadors this season. So if that resonates with you, Feel free to reach out by going to genesisamarskemp.net. We are ranked in the top 3%, you heard me, 3% globally per www.listennotes.com. And it's listeners and viewers like you that make it possible. So I definitely want to thank you for supporting the mission. And all monetary donations and contributions are greatly appreciated. So until we chat next time, peace, love and lots of blessings. Remember, you are an asset, not a liability. You were created for a purpose, on purpose, and you can be whatever you desire to be. So get to know you and love you so no one else can tell you what you aren't. So peace. <laughs>